All right, welcome back to another episode of Stitch Method. Before we begin, make sure you do this. Cool, and now we'll begin. All right, so there is a, a spectrum to blue soloing, all right, and they, that gives you different results, and we're gonna go over like three or four of them. If you're wondering, like, if you don't sound good in your blue soloing, you think you're gonna prove it, or you don't sound like the people you wanna sound like, this might help you. There are different types of blueses, and, and the more you think about it, and the scale options you have, and the different combinations of chord tones, you'll be able to kind of emulate and pursue whatever path you want. So we're gonna start right away. Uh, everything that I mention is gonna be available in my Blues Primer playlist and my Blues Master Classes. And any videos that are not in that that I reference will be linked below, but I promise you, all the ideas will be here. So a blues, all right? We're gonna stick with an E blues. I already have a loop made, it is all good. And we're gonna use pretty much an E minor pentatonic. So the chords we have are gonna be an E, a and B. And the first thing we're going to do is show you the power of the pentatonic. So we're going to make sure we know our E minor pentatonic. Now, I know everyone's like, okay, Ian, yeah, I get it. Okay, so the idea here is that with just the pentatonic, uh, this is the sound of like early blues, Freddie King, Albert King. It climbs into like the Clapton style, just the laid back, hey, I'm going to play a pentatonic and I'm going to let my kind of like voice and freedom discover where to go. Now I will say that hitting the, the root notes of the chords as they um, as they appear, which is available in this video that should be popping up, you know, it talks about hitting the one on the one, the four on the four, and the five on the five, which I will do right now. But when we do this, when we just say, okay, we're just gonna play the pentatonic, and we're just gonna highlight those chord changes, we get the sound of early blues. So check it out, here we go. not just it, but let's explain. You have a tremendous amount of freedom here. You have a pentatonic scale, and all you're doing is either hitting the one on the one chord, which is the E, the four on the four chord, which is the A, and the five on the five chord, which is the B. And with that amount of freedom, you hear a lot in early blues, a lot of bending, a lot of repetition, a lot of just freeness on this. Now I'm gonna keep my guitar clean and the tone clean, uh, but you can see what I'm saying. I'm gonna do it one more time, but now that we have our path, and we have our goal, which is a minimalistic approach. It does not mean bad, it's just the sound of early blues. We get to experiment more with bends and holds and all the fun stuff, so check us out. Still, it's the sound of early blues, just pentatonic playing, highlighting the chord tones, and, and kind of just being as free as you want with bends and slides and just kind of pauses and I think it's blue mustache hair off. It always happens. <laughs> Why do that? And uh, where was I? And it just lets you be as free as a bird. You can hear this in the early blues playing. So if this is the sound of the blues that you like, then all you need is a pentatonic and knowing where those chord tones are. Again, all the stuff available on my Blues Primer playlist and Blues Master Classes. The next part of the spectrum gets into dirtying it up a little bit with chord tones. And we're gonna you know, think, I mentioned Clapton in the, uh, in the early version, but also think about like, the rock Clapton, not just the blues Clapton, but rock Clapton, um, a mild Stevie Ray, all right? Where we're starting to incorporate chord tones of the chords that are happening. We're now in the second part of the spectrum. We're going from early blues to kind of like a rock blues. And so, uh, so let me show you. So here, really quickly, I have an E7 right here. All right, and again, all the stuff's available on that blues primer playlist. And so I'm gonna utilize the chord tones as little double stops. I see this and this, I'm kinda kinda bring this in. This is part of that E chord. And uh, let's see, on the A7, I have an A7 here. I'm gonna use maybe a double stop like this, which is, here's the A7, 12, 14, 12, 14. Just gonna pick a piece of it and kind of slam on it. I have a B7, which can be like this, or actually like this. I can do these two. 
these two, and these. And I'm going to bring in a little bit more chord tones, and this gives it more of a kind of a rock feel. So check this out. So you saw a little bit more chord tones. And so when you start to bring in chord tones, we get a little bit of a dirtier blues. Again, I'm keeping the tone clean so you can hear it and you can throw distortion on and be as cool as cucumber. But uh, we're starting to, you know, go through the spectrum of what you get when you start playing more and more stuff on top of the blues. Now, the next spectrum that you have starts to get into like contemporary blues playing. Now, contemporary blues playing, I have to say, is it's not my cup of tea. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of it. If you are, I don't mean to offend you. It's just everybody has, you know, uh, what they like, like different strokes for different folks. And I'm going to show you the end. There's two kind of components of um, contemporary blues. And you can think of like uh, Matt Schofield and Robin Ford, all these people that kind of it, like take blues to a different level. And the first level that you're going to look at is bringing in a lot more chord arpeggios than just the scale itself. The first two are really based on pentatonics and then bring in things. And this is more about kind of chord tones and arpeggios and kind of using the scale to sew them together. So if you have a question at all about chord arpeggios, check out my free uh, caged arpeggio masterclass. It explains everything. And now if we look the E7, I have a full E7 arpeggio here, which looks like this. Uh -huh. <laughs> every time. All right, so that's my full E7 arpeggio. And now we're going to solo with more of those bits. I have an A7 arpeggio here. I'm going to do the whole thing. But, and also have a B7 arpeggio. I'm just going to use the simple one right here. Right. And we solo with these arpeggios more than the actual scale itself and we get more of a contemporary feel. Okay, check this out. more flighty, a lot more arpeggiation happening. And this is where we start to like, you know, there, there is on the, on the spectrum we started with, there's that down home blues sound. And as you add more chord tones, you get into the rock. And as you add even more chord tones, we get into contemporary blues. And so if you like contemporary blues, you want to learn how to combine a lot of arpeggios and scale work. And there's other things that people do, and we're going to get mildly into that in a second. Uh, but there's this drifting you can do on the spectrum to get whatever sound you want. The last thing we're going to talk about is like like full-fledged contemporary blues where like anything goes, where it's like the kitchen sink of blues. And again, I don't mean to sound rude. It's just not my cup of tea. Uh, there are some really sick guitar players that do a great job. And if you want to understand like their ingredient list, that's what this is about. So full spectrum like contemporary blues is, of course, if we're playing with E blues, you're going to use a minor pentatonic. You're going to use chord tones. You're going to use arpeggios. You're also going to use, uh, in the video that is shown right here, your mixodorian blue scale. Now, the mixodorian blue scale is really intense. It's a scale that encompasses four scales all at once. But when you're in this like super contemporary blues, you really ignore that fact and you really bring in the full scale. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of just solo 
it's kind of like going back to the pentatonic, but I have a huge scale here, and I'm going to be try be try and be excuse me as free as a bird with this uh, mixo Dorian blues scale. I'm not really going to mix the scales like I talked about in the video that I just showed. You can watch that. I'm just going to kind of play the scale uh, up and down, see how it goes. <laughs> how loose it is and how jazzy it kind of starts to sound like. And so, you know, as you go from down home blues into contemporary blues, there's a level of scale verse chord tones. Now, the last thing I'll say is you're going to hear other scales. You're going to hear the diminished stuff, sometimes in the four, like, I'll show you that. Oh, really? 12, this is on the A chord, 12, 15, 13, 16, 14, 17. Just this little run on any four chord gives you this kind of like Robin Ford approach or anything where, you know, this out of the box playing, but really it's just, you're throwing all of your ingredients in there. So check us out. Here's like full contemporary. here it just it just starts to like be very very like full of color um, and again you can bend and you could get really aggressive with it no problems there but these are the ingredients I'm kind of being tame with it and what you want to try and do and, and I've got to mention this if you want to practice this stuff check out my patreon page which is all about practicing this stuff you want to try and mix and match you want to say okay the first time around I'm gonna try uh, you know regular blues and second time around I'm gonna try some of those just the arpeggios and, and you want to try and mix and match so that you play them so much that you can recall them the instant you want to when you're playing a blues. So here, I'm just going to mix and match the ideas. I don't know if I can say out loud my ideas as I play them. Who knows? I'll try. Let's start off with just the regular pentatonic and the highlighting those chord tones. <laughs> mix and match these ideas you get different types of sounds of blues that are uh, being played out of your lead instrument your guitar all right and so that's pretty much it i just want to show you that 
All this information really is available in that Blues Primer playlist. If you're new to this channel and I'm kind of making sense, check it out. It will change your life, I promise you. Even if you're a fan of Stitch Method, learning the ratios of core tones to pentatonics or diatonics to core tones really gives you a feel of what kind of sound you're going to get. And you don't want to feel lost. You don't want to have all your ingredients and just play them because you can. You want to know what they do. And so with that being said, thank you so much for being here. Please check out my Patreon page where I have practice sessions based off of this exact lesson. And I'll see you again soon. Make sure you're subscribed. Should have said that in the beginning. Oh, I did. Never mind. All right. Bye-bye.